with surfing, especially like we're not some of the highest paid athletes in the world or anything like that. And a lot of times it's like financially, maybe like not the most rewarding thing, but for me, like I see people who might make a lot of money or they have like this job that's really high paying and not that they're not happy, but they're using their free time to go do things that they love. Like maybe they're going surfing and I'm like, I might not be making like millions of dollars, but I'm doing what I love. And every day I wake up and I'm happy and I'm motivated to go chase after something. Today on the show, we're joined by pro surfer Jake Marshall from Encinitas, California. He's ranked number eight in the world, but his journey to surfing began just playing in the ocean with his father. We talk about what goes through his head after his board's been broken in half and he's pinned underwater, his competitive mindset versus the waves or versus other surfers. And then lastly, the frustration of dropping off the tour and how to get your mojo back. Jake lives in the moment. He spends time with friends and he changes perspective by remembering why he fell in love with surfing in the first place. Let's get into it. Jake Marshall just made the surfing world tour. Congrats. Thanks for being here today. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. How do you feel? I feel great. I mean, um, it's been nice to be home for a couple of weeks. I've kind of had a long traveling year so just being back and kind of just chilling and taking a couple weeks to relax has been pretty nice (laughs) so that's the cost yeah i've been on the tours you're never around definitely how many months are you gonna be gone next year um usually on any given year i'm kind of gone for like eight to ten months out of the year i would say so i mean it's kind of like the price you got to pay but at the same time like getting to travel the world and go to all these cool places to go surf is a pretty awesome trade-off, so I, I love it, you know. Is it lonely? Um, It can be, but usually we have, or you kind of travel with, like, a lot of your friends or people at least who are all, like, pretty like-minded to you. Like, we just love to surf and travel, and we're all doing these events together, so having a good crew of people with you makes it a lot, a lot easier. If you're just going by yourself or solo to a lot of these things, it probably would get pretty boring and a little bit lonely. <laughs> totally get it yeah do you ever have friends or family girlfriend or whatever like come join you at certain spots along the door yeah mostly hawaii is when they come but then sometimes like i'll have my girlfriend come with me to like australia she came this year was really fun and uh just getting to see some like different places with her is always really cool too that's a commitment yeah fly halfway around the world to see me for sure (laughs) you've clearly got the right girl yep she definitely (laughs) i definitely do (laughs) tell me about surfing like why surfing To be honest, I mean, it's funny because, like, my mom doesn't surf, and my dad picked it up kind of, like, later in life, you know, and he, both my parents just loved kind of, like, the ocean and just being around the beach and stuff, so growing up, that was just kind of what we did is, like, just go down to the beach and play in the ocean, do whatever, like, fishing, snorkeling, boogie boarding, and then slowly just kind of got into surfing, and I was still pretty young. I was probably only, like, six or seven when I started, and then I pretty much just was like, this is super fun and I love doing it. And my dad was like super willing to take me all the time. And uh, one thing kind of led to another. And I was just like, I really just love being in the ocean and surfing. And um, luckily, like with surfing, you're kind of able to see a career with it really young. You're kind of like, okay, like if I do this and this, like I can get to this one place eventually, you know, so you were able to like pursue it and it's something you can do for your whole life. So I kind of knew like, even if I didn't end up becoming a pro, it was something that I just really wanted to be able to do forever and kind of have that in my life, no matter if I was competing or if I ended up getting a different job somewhere, I kind of knew that I just wanted to be by the ocean and be a surfer, I guess. (laughs) But the genesis was, I love my dad and want to be near him. Yeah. And then it was, Ooh, I love the water and love surfing. And I'm with my dad. Yep. And I have two younger brothers who surf as well. So as they started getting into it, it was something that we could kind of all do together. And especially as we started to get a little older, it was like we could all just go down to the beach together. And we were all stoked to be there all day and just go surf with each other. So having my brothers do it with me as well is definitely a big reason why I am at where I am today. Doing something you love with the people you love. Yeah. What's better than that? Exactly. You can't really beat that. (laughs) So when did it become this idea of, I'm not just doing this for fun. I'm doing this because I want to actually start winning. Yeah. I mean, when did that transition occur for you? Well, for me, I'm super competitive. Like that's something that since I was really young, like seems like has always kind of been 
in my DNA, whether it's like a little board game or like pick up basketball or just kind of anything, like I want to win. So for me, like, I think when I was like 12, I was playing soccer on Saturdays and I was surfing on Sundays. And then I had to make a decision like the next year because I had to compete surfing on Saturday and Sunday and skip soccer. And I was like, you know, this is what I want to do. Like I want to surf and really give it my best shot to kind of try to make a career out of this. And it sounds funny when you're saying that when you're only like 11 or 12 years old, you know, but at the time you're kind of just like, you are seeing people who are older than you kind of like set the path for you. And you're like, you know, I, this is the path I got to be on if I want to give this a real shot. And I ended up kind of just like going all in on surfing when I was probably like 12 years old. And yeah, I loved it. So that was your choice or was that a nudging from other people? Uh, I would say it was, it was my choice. Like my parents were definitely, they would have been happy with whatever I did, but I think we both kind of knew that surfing was like definitely more of my passion. And, uh, the other stuff I would do just because I had grown up with my friends kind of playing soccer or baseball or whatever. But then with surfing, I was just like, you know, I, I love this. This is what I want to be doing a hundred percent of the time. So the tell for you at 12 and 13 was, I'm going to say no to that because I like this better. Exactly. Yeah. And I would still sometimes show up to my friends' games on the weekends or whatever and go support them or go watch them. But surfing was something that I'd wake up and I'd want to do that every day, all day. (laughs) That was it. Do you realize how many people can't do their passion for a living? As I've gotten older, I've definitely started to be more and more grateful for having surfing is such an early passion and something that I'm still so passionate about today because you do see so many people like go through college and expect to have some kind of job or, but at the end of the day, they're just trying to figure out something to kind of like get started and hopefully find that passion one day. So for me, like the older I've gotten, the more that's kind of like, I've had more to be grateful that I've, I've had this for my whole life. There's this existential debate going on. Do I, do I have a life where I pursue this paycheck and economic stability, or do I have a life where I pursue my passion with really economic uncertainty? Yep. That sums up surfing pretty good <laughs> right there. Uh, I feel like if you're doing something, you know, like with surfing, especially like we're not some of the highest paid athletes in the world or anything like that. And a lot of times it's like financially, maybe like not the most rewarding thing, but For me, like I see people who might make a lot of money or they have like this job that's really high paying and not that they're not happy, but they're using their free time to go do things that they love. Like maybe they're guard surfing and I'm like, I might not be making like millions of dollars, but I'm doing what I love. And every day I wake up and I'm happy and I'm motivated to go chase after something or maybe the waves are good or maybe I'm focused on the, in the gym, but I'm always working towards like some kind of goal. And for me, like, there's always going to be time in my life to maybe go pursue like financial stability, you know, but right now I'm super young and I'm like, so blessed to have this that I'm passionate about. So I, I love pursuing that every day. (laughs) Yeah. And I would say so many people tell their children to get good grades, to go to a good college, to get certain skills and experience. But I think that spending a decade plus surfing you're developing this idea of long-term goal assessment and accomplishment, competitiveness, right? All these intangible skills that when you leave the tour would be a huge benefit to any company that wanted to hire you. Yeah. I mean, I agree. We're kind of like a lot of this stuff, like you're traveling around the globe. You got to be like, you got to learn how to be familiar and kind of like navigate through different cultures and new places and stuff like that, where you might not speak the language or really have like any idea where you're even at (laughs) you know what I mean and then not to mention like competing you learn so much like not only just like about competing and about kind of like how that environment works but mostly just about yourself when you're going on these like really long trips where maybe things might not be going your way or you're kind of having a rough go like that's where you really kind of like gain a lot of perspective and you might learn a lot more about yourself there than you really can like in any sort of like job or classroom I'm being 24, like I've already gained so much life experience that it's, it's really cool, you know? <laughs> For sure. And, and there's 32 of you. And as we talk to other athletes, the thing that always comes up is the hardest part, job security. 
because there's th literally thousands that want that job. Mm -hmm. And so they, they live in this world of, I'm one bad game, I'm one bad tournament, I'm one bad season away from anyone taking my job. Does that haunt you? Is that something you think about? It can feel like that for sure. And I wouldn't say that it's something that like necessarily like haunts me or drives me because I feel like I want to come from a place where I'm like pursuing my goals based off just like my my own competitiveness and my own like responsibility to myself to do good. And like, I don't want to be driven by the next contract or maybe someone taking my job. So it's, but it, at the same time, you can't avoid it. Like it's always there, you know? So for instance, like this year I fell off the, the tour and I was like, there was definitely like a month or two where I was like, damn, like, am I ever going to get back to this level? Like, this might be pretty hard. Like, are my sponsors going to like give up on me or whatever, you know? Cause I've already kind of like experienced the same thing a few years ago, like in a little bit of a different way. So for me to kind of like have to like reset and center myself and be able to rechase that goal and make it back to the tour was like kind of a big accomplishment, but it was also a big mental reset about like kind of just letting things go and just striving to achieve what you want to. That's right, because if you think about it, you spent 12 years to get here. Yep. And most athletes, they have four years in high school and four years in college. So most athletes are pro at eight years. Mm -hmm. You've done the equivalent of additional four years of college for sure to make the pros, and so that's that's a different kind of commitment. That's that's a lot longer than the typical person goes. It's yeah, it's a long time, and um, yeah, for me, like I uh, I feel like when I was kind of growing up, like all through my teenage years and stuff like that, like I was really successful, and I didn't really have like a ton of like adversity and like people were always really supportive of me, like especially my sponsors and stuff like that. So I was really lucky, like as I was a teenager, almost till I was like 20 to never really have to like deal with people like kind of doubting me too much or like maybe too much adversity, you know? And then around then I felt like I kind of had like a couple bad years trying to qualify for the tour. Everyone kind of just gave up on me, like my sponsors and like the rug was kind of pulled out from underneath me. And that's where I kind of like, maybe for a little bit, I was kind of lost there because I didn't really know like what I should do, you know, like I was like, should I even keep pursuing this or whatever? But that is when I kind of learned like, you know, if you're going to do this, it's got to all be for yourself. You know, you can't be doing this for other people. And those kind of lessons like eventually definitely make you stronger and probably like without that, I don't know if I would be here now, you know, so all those things you got to kind of learn from them and just roll with the punches and move on. Did you come close to walking away? I uh, definitely, I mean, I was really bummed for like a couple of years, like, or mostly just one year, like I had to get surgery on my shoulder and I, that whole year I probably should have gotten it earlier in the year, but I knew it was my last year of my contract. So I was kind of like just pushing through it and trying to like leave a good impression on my sponsors to get signed for the next year. And at that time, surfing was kind of like the industry wasn't really doing so well either. So pretty much all of my sponsors were just like, hey, we can't re-sign you for the next year. And then I was looking at the next couple of years, like, okay, I'm going to have to pay for this out of my own pocket. Like, I'm just getting surgery. Like, I've never really had a big injury like this before. And I'm going to be out for a few months. Like, should I just go back to school? Like, what, should I get a job? Like, what should I do? I mean, a lot of people in my life who are close to me were like, hey, you've put at like eight or 10 years of like working super hard towards this goal and you really barely gave yourself a shot, you know? So I definitely have a lot of people to be thankful for who kind of pushed me back into that direction. You know, when I started getting back into it, I like had some success and I was like, okay, like I can do this. 10 years towards a goal and suddenly people are doubting you yeah. and pulling financial security away from you. Suddenly your body is betraying you yep. and you're having surgery. Now your confidence is shaking. You're having self-doubt. For sure. Was there one person in that moment that kept you there that was by your side? Um, I would say my parents have definitely always been so supportive of me. And um, there is like one day I remember I told them like, I'm done. Like, I'm just going to go to school. Like, I've always been pretty good at school too. So I was like, you know, maybe this is just what I should do. Like, and I was super bummed at that point. And they were like, just let's heal up from your surgery. Like, in a couple months, you might feel a little bit differently just because when you can't do anything and you're just sitting there, like, I can't 
get better. Like I have to try to heal my shoulder. Like I don't even know what this recovery process is going to look like. And, uh, they were super supportive of me and we're just like, you know, let's think about this and not make any quick decisions and like, give it another shot. And you'll probably know as you start to like get back surfing again, after you, you're healed up, like what you're going to want to do. And they did always leave it up to me, but at the same time, they're like, you put just too much into this to kind of just walk away and not even give yourself the satisfaction of knowing if you can, if you can do it or not. So that advice in that moment of despair was stay calm. Yeah. Don't make a rash decision. Exactly. <laughs> let's just see how it looks in a few months. Just keep on going and let's just see, let's collect more data. For sure. And when you're 20, it's pretty easy to like, want to just make rash decisions. So sometimes it's good to have older people in your life who have kind of like, you know, been through the world a little bit and have a little more life experience than you to kind of just tell you like, all right, let's just pump the brakes. Like let's chill out for a sec. And the answer will kind of be able to like show itself relatively soon, but you got to have some patience with it. So has that advice that your mom and dad gave you, has it come in handy since that moment four years ago as you've had other ups and downs? For sure. I mean, you're always going to have ups and downs, especially in a sport like surfing where you're in the ocean. So a lot of it, it can be out of your control. Sometimes, you know, like the ocean might determine that the waves are just going to go flat for your heat, or maybe your competitor is going to get a really good wave. And there's really nothing you can kind of do about that, which is a little bit different than kind of playing other sports where you're like on a basketball court and there's the hoop and it's not going to move. And the core is the same everywhere you go, you know? So with surfing, you kind of have to like really just trust that what you're doing is the right thing to do and you're moving like upwards into the right path even though sometimes it feels like your patience can like start wearing thin and stuff is like just not going your way or if you feel like things are going against you so i think especially with our sport where you have nature in control of a lot of it you really have to kind of be patient and just trust the process that you're doing and trust that you're working towards the right thing and it'll all kind of come together eventually so when you're surfing, Jake, is it, I need to beat everyone else on the beach today, or is it, I need to maximize the wave that's coming for me? Yeah, for me, surfing is like, I feel like there's kind of two parts of it. Like, I always am super just grateful to be in the water, and I love surfing for what it is so much. Like, it's not always about being maybe my best that day or being the best surfer in the water that day. Like it's like therapeutic in a way you might be going through something and you just kind of want to get in the water and just get away from everything for a little bit. And then other days, like when I'm really like ramping up for a contest or I'm like in that mindset where I'm trying to get better, like I paddle out and I'm like, I want to be the best guy in the lineup today. Like when the waves are coming to me, I want to do my best surfing. Like I want to really perform, you know? So I think that there can kind of be like two different ways to approach it, you know, depending on what kind of mood I'm in and what time of year it is. But for the most part, like, especially when we go to these events, like when I paddle out, I'm super competitive and I'm like, I want to be on the best waves and doing my best surfing. But it's more about proving that to myself than trying to prove to other people that maybe like I'm surfing better than you or you. It's like, I want to just surf the best I can for myself. So that mindset that makes you your best is I want to maximize my potential. Yep. And that's how you get into your flow state by just focusing on your moment, your wave, your role. Exactly. And that's so true with the ocean because someone else might get the best wave of the day and there's nothing you can do about it. You can't play any defense on them. So you kind of really just have to be like focused on yourself and be in that moment for you. So many sports coaches talk about visualization right and optimizing the best version of yourself on the field or in the ocean and we've talked a little bit about fear and the stats say 60 percent of people are motivated by fear but we know you're not your best when you're afraid has there been a time in your surfing journey where you were dealing with fear with surfing for me like on the competitive side um the last couple of years like i made the tour and i was so excited to be there but then at the same time I didn't want to fall off the tour and whether that's like from your own ego or like other, you don't want other people to like perceive you that way. Like you're scared of potentially falling off the tour and not being on that elite level. So 
that was kind of something that really this year, like I learned a lot about myself, you know, like I feel like I was surfing the first half of the year, like a little bit scared to like fall off the tour. And I was like, maybe too motivated by negative thoughts, like, oh, I don't want this to happen or I don't want to end up in this position, you know? And then in the back half of the year, I kind of realized like, if you're just, if you're motivated by that, like you're just going to be a little bit nervous and kind of tentative, you know, where you really have to surf to win and surf to kind of like go for it and to perform your best. And you kind of have to have those like positive thoughts going. And then also with surfing, sometimes you're out in the lineup and the fear isn't like anything that's going on on the beach. It's like, oh my God, this wave in front of me, it's huge. Like that thing could definitely kill me if I mess this one up. <laughs> you know, so there's been a few times, like my very first event at Pipeline, the waves were pumping, but it was like huge and a big wave was coming at me. And I was like, okay, like I got to go. Like this wave is so good. But at the same time, you're kind of thinking like, oh man, like this is a, this wave's no joke, you know? So, <laughs> I ended up like totally eating it on that wave and like got slammed and like my board broke and I got sent to the beach, but you realize like, okay, I'm still here. It's all good. Like <laughs> you got to pick yourself up and go for it again. So it's not fear of the ocean, but sometimes you definitely are in the ocean and it'll put you in some really uncomfortable places where you have to stay calm and kind of like keep your wits about you because there's not really much you can do. So if, if you're, if you're in a wave that's so violent, it breaks your board in half. And as you said, you're pinned underwater. How do you respond to that? I'm underwater. I have no control of anything. What is, what's the right response for those of us have not done that before? I think you just got to stay super calm as hard as that is. Like, it's so easy for your mind to start panicking and being like, I need air. Like, I need to get to the surface, you know, which are all pretty basic human thoughts that anyone would have. <laughs> you know, you're like, I don't want to drown. So, <laughs> but... If you are too hyper and you're like, I need air and you're starting to panic and freak out, like that's only going to make it harder and kind of like a uh, less chance of not just surviving, but when you come up to the surface, you're going to have way less energy and not be thinking clearly and like prepared for the next waves. So just try to stay like as calm as possible. Have yeah. you ever been rescued? Uh, I haven't. I mean, yeah, I've, I've gotten rescued from the jet skis. When you come up, there especially in places like hawaii where like the water patrol is amazing and they're super they're super on top of it there because they have to deal with so many things there's like a couple signals you can give or if your board's kind of like broken or gone you know they might want they definitely will come check in on you and be like hey do you need help or whatever but if you can kind of like give them like a tap on your head or like if that's like you're all good and then if you wave your arm they know to try to come get you because something could be wrong <laughs> That's pretty wild. But it also probably gives you a lot of comfort knowing that there are safety measures. Yep. When there's no safety measures in the lineup, you are a lot more nervous and kind of on your game. Like, okay, there's no one to come rescue me in this situation. So maybe you take a little bit less risk in the lineup. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so you got this short-term fear of a wave literally hurting you. Yep. And then this long-term fear of performance. And as you mentioned when you're in a fear, long-term fear state, you weren't as happy, no. you weren't performing as well. What was the catalyst to change your, your state, your mental state? How did you flip? Yeah. So I don't know. I have like some great mentors in my life and like one of my coaches or he's my surf coach, uh, Chris Gallagher. He's like been helping me since I was probably 12. So he's been with me like every step of the way. And he was kind of was preaching that to me a bit like you know you gotta just like let go of like these expectations you have for yourself and stuff like that but at the end of the day it kind of has to like come from you I felt like this year I probably hit like one of my like lower states where I was like competing and losing a lot and just getting down on myself and stuff like that and when you kind of are able to like sometimes you need to get to your low point to kind of let go of everything and be like you know like what am I even holding on to still, you know, and you kind of just feel a bit more freed up and like ready to go for it. And this year I was, had like a bunch of bad events in a row and we had four events left in the season. And I didn't really have much results or anything kind of going my way. The event was in South Africa and I ended up going there and staying with like a few of my really close friends and none of us had really been having a great season. So we kind of were all like just having fun and just enjoying the place we were at and it seemed like just kind of like 
not being so focused on the result and being more just like having fun every day and going surfing and kind of just being a little bit more present and grateful for where we're at. Like we're like, we're getting to go to this amazing place in Africa with our friends. We're surfing every day and kind of just like, you realize at the end of the day, like, you know, it doesn't really matter that much if I make this heater perform, like we have so much other things in our life that are so awesome and we're so grateful to have that and kind of just putting that in perspective a little bit for me kind of helped a lot I don't know like sometimes you get stuck in your own little bubble like you're just like the whole world revolves around me and how I'm doing and my results and you kind of like pull back from that and realize there's a lot more going on to life and it sounds kind of cliche I guess but it's definitely it's true when you're able to like remove yourself from your own little expectation bubble that you're in and kind of you know put yourself in a bit give yourself some perspective about kind of everything that's going on so what, what i just heard you say is extremely powerful you're a world-class surfer you're in a terrible slump i surrender yeah i surround myself with my friends and enjoy them i live in the moment and then i become the best version of myself again yeah what a what a great formula for life yeah exactly because then you're kind of at the place where you're like you know life is fun and all these things that we're doing is is killer and it's such a good time like why are we so worried about whether you win or lose you know like we're still getting to experience all these amazing things so just sometimes like being able to pull back and surrender like that i think it's it's easier said than done i would say but when you're able to kind of actually do it it, it opens up a lot of doors what a great insight from one of the world's best. <laughs> thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. And go. Two, one, stop. It literally settled in the last three seconds. Oh, That's good. Oh. Tell us you guys did a good job. Help me recover. Come on. That's it, you're good. He's Ooh. like, I only hang with the winners. <laughs> the winner sucks. <laughs>